happy Tuesday. Yeah, I had to think about that one for a second. Well, um, I thought it was Wednesday for a hot minute. Hump day, because it feels like I'm getting fucking ass raped right now on Reddit. Um, I had the consummate nerve to uh, make the connection between a particular German medal for uh, marksmanship to the SS. Um, of course, everybody and their, their brother coming out of the woodwork who needs a stratification point. Um, they, I am not allowed to respond anymore. They completely disabled my ability to comment according to them because I'm stupid, I suck, I'm schizo posting, I need to take my meds. These are their words, not mine. Um, I hate to point it out to, to people, um, especially airmen not watching from home. General Pat Ryder actually got on um, a, a press conference at the White House about three, four weeks ago to talk about mental health in the armed forces, specifically the Air Force. So we have what appear to be Intel console bunnies, um, one who appears to know me, um, possibly, I don't know, um, uh, denigrated me. I They have stripped me of my right to respond back and to defend myself. Um, they are promoting what appears to be a, um, a nod to Nazi Germany. It is, again, a marksmanship medal. I don't care if Germany um, happened to be our allies. And I, for the one idiot who said, well, there are NATO allies, you dumbass. Not much of, of allies um, after what they, they did. To, to stiff us, but whatever. Um, apparently you don't know anything about that. Um, your leadership has probably painted you a pretty peachy fucking picture. Uh, Jeremy doesn't care about you guys. Um, holy hell, you fucking suck. I feel bad for everyone that has no choice but to be around you during the day. Um, I feel bad for the airmen who are waiting and begging to be mentored on Reddit um, who could use your insight and guidance and mentorship, but you're here mentoring me and I'm not even your subordinate. I'm not even in the in the Air Force anymore. Um, although I would argue once an NCO, always an NCO, once an airman, always an airman. Um, I don't need permission from, from the Marines to say that. Yeah, I, I can feel that in my heart. I don't need permission or validation from anybody or um, authorization from up the chain. And here's another argument there. They're pushing on this fucking SS nod of a medal. Um, where was it? Oh, God. I, it totally popped out of my brain. Uh, that, oh, that, that it's not, it doesn't stand for... Um, shoot softle. It's schnorr. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you a fucking clown? Do you think the people who developed this metal, who conceptualized this metal, put zero thought into it? And didn't do any kind of like semiotic research or um, nods? Are you fucking that clueless? Jesus Christ, you probably are. Uh, here's the guy. Germany is one of our biggest NATO partners. Oh, really? Okay. Um, we rebuilt Germany for free after the war. Take a look at how America's um, fared after World War II. Yeah, ever heard about the Rust Belt um, in, in America? No, you probably haven't. Seize German word. Oh, I got, I got another nod from the Intel console bunnies playing on Reddit and um, not allowing me to respond while they keep blowing up my, my comment. Because they can't keep up. They can't keep up with the knowledge that I have in my retort. So they have, they have to disable my ability to comment. That is so fucking cowardly. I can't even. It's, it's pathetic, really. Um... Germany is hardly what I would call an ally these days, you fucking idiot. They are incandescent right now with the United States. Are you fucking kidding me? Have you not listened to the news? Um, probably not. Um, you just listen to what's going to get you a fucking uh, brownie point at the next promotion board. Typical. Run along and go mentor your fucking airmen. 
E or Magnus S. Domine replied to my comment, oh joy. Um, the award antedates the SS and the Nazi party though. Oh my God, what? No, nobody would ever create an award based on the heraldry of the pre-existing history and legacy and historiography of their culture, especially not their military culture. I, I can't think of any civilization in history that's ever, ever relied on the historiography of military culture to include it in the semiotics of their contemporary military. No, I've never, that's, wow. I'm, I'm so glad you could, it's like saying, why should we be reading Art of War then? Yeah, we don't really we don't really need to read shit um, if we're not gonna learn anything. Hey, hey, ass clown! I'm glad that you learned a big word, antedates. So I'm clearly speaking with an Intel bunny right now because they're dropping the big words and their their version of what they call um, analytical thinking. Which, to be fair, to be fair, all things considered. In, in the framework of the Air Force, I would say, yeah, it's more analytical than most um, AFSCs, but until analytical, you are not. We are, what, how many years were we in a war that we shouldn't have been in in the first place? Guess how that war was started? Because of intel, early intel reports, weapons of mass distraction. Yeah, you're not that fucking bright. Um, You've clearly never heard of the gendarme. You've clearly never heard of the genisseries. You've clearly never heard about the inclusion of Roman history and heraldry and British heraldry in the armed forces of the United States. It's in your fucking NCOA shit. It's in your fucking, um, your PME, your PFE. When we used to have, I don't know, maybe you guys don't have a PFE, PFE anymore. I just got blown up again by another ass kiss. See, I can't really hate them too much because they are that thirsty for stratification. People are that thirsty for stratification right now. And so it's gonna be hyper, hyper exaggerated in the Intel community because Intel community, Intel bodies are fucking thirsty, period. So keep it coming. If you guys want to doggy pile on me while you're sitting console on Title 10, hey, it's your career. Guess what? The big guys always throw the peasants under the bus first, so have fun with that. Um, Monsieur Worldwide replied to my comment. If you don't agree with the medal, earn it yourself and then choose not to wear it. Or I could just exercise my, what's that thing? Right to free speech? Which I can't on this thread because they've disabled my ability to reply. They haven't disabled anybody else's ability. No, no, no. I've had, what, 10 people doggy pile on me now to respond with what I'm, I'm sure the, the average airman sitting at home is thinking, oh my god. This chick is getting school stomped by these guys. No, they disabled my ability to reply. And I don't blame them because they cannot keep up with me. They don't have a grasp on his history like I do. They don't know about Schwabia. They don't know about Oldenburg, Habsburg. They, these clowns probably think there are no more royal families living on the, co the continent. They probably don't even know what the reference the continent means. Um, yeah, there are plenty of extant royal families who, this is going to be mind-blowing. I'm, I'm inviting you, Airmen, not watching this from home, to join me on an adventure called What Could the Implications of That Be? If your royal family, if your royal dynasty um, survives war after war after war after war. Hmm, I can only imagine. So no, um, Monsieur Worldwide, um, no, I will use my right to free speech to criticize it. How about that? Probably not something you're very comfortable with. You're probably not used to NCOs telling you that your program sucks. Um, not my problem. It's your problem. And I, I have, I have some watershed advice to give you. Hop off Reddit and go see to your Intel troops. Because I, w I was at a unit, an Intel saturated unit for five years, and I'm telling you, Intel is as bad as it gets. Let me repeat that. Intel is as bad as it gets. They eat their own in every sense of the word. Yes, hell, 
Larson winner. Uh, should I keep going? I probably could. Hughes, Patrick, me. Hmm. Uh huh. Those are just the names I know off the top of my head. There are a couple of other people from Creech, too. Um, yeah, Intel eats their own. They're a bunch of fucking brown nosing, ass kissing, toxic, unhappy, backbiting assholes who think they're the smartest people in the room. Okay, let's see. Ooh, good job for my electric company. You used less energy last week. Okay, thank you, Evergy. All right, all right. Thank you for the shout out. Bye. Oh, J. Crew Price dot, dot Reddit. Super Crisis 64 replied to my comment. Oh, bring it on, Super Crisis. Since I can't respond to you on Reddit, I'll respond to you here. Uh, I think you're the one missing the point here, bud. No. No, actually, it is a bona fide fact that um, the Screaming Eagles stormed Berchtesgaden. Yeah, and they pillaged through all the all the um, fine wine and whiskey, and took some of the the fucking um, black market items home with them. That's a fact. Here, here's another fact for you. They even grandfathered in prominent Nazi um, soldiers. N not peons like me. No, no, no. They didn't give a shit about the peons. I'm talking about the military intelligentsia because what you guys don't understand about Germany, the, the history that you've been given, that you've been handed, is that Germany was some watered-down bat country that couldn't fucking get up on its legs. Stand by. Let me take a puff. That couldn't be further from the goddamn truth. There are world-renowned institutions, names that people like you, and I'm not, I don't mean that as a, uh, um, a snub, because I didn't until I went to a brick and mortar, but <clears throat> names of institutions that people like you, that honest, every day-to-day -day airmen, Americans don't even know exist but are extremely exclusive, extremely prestigious. Some of the oldest universities in the world are in Germany. Mm -hmm. Some of the oldest universities in the world are in Germany. Let that sink in. Yeah, um, Germany was the epicenter of culture, the arts, uh, the military sciences, the sciences, the academics? Oh, Jesus. Um, so for you to tell me that you think I'm missing the point and you don't even know how to spell the word historiography and drop a two or three sen sentence summary on what a hist historiography entails? Nah, dude. Nah. Look around you. Look around, not just at your Air Force semiotics and symbols, look around at your national semiotics and symbols and your international semiotics and symbols. They are oftentimes, very oftentimes, almost exclusively, exclusively pulled from if not earlier era and epochs, ep, ep, I can't say E-P-O-C-H's, um, civilizations, you fucking dumbass. The fucking, your colonel. Your colonel, the eagle. The eagle is a goddamn nod to road, mother Rome, motherfucker. And you're gonna tell me that I'm crazy for thinking that this is a nod to SS? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? It's mind blowing how much thinking they don't want you to do in the military these days. I, like, I almost can't even be mad. Um, take your meds and stop schizo posting on a sub for a career you left three years ago. What the fuck? This isn't we. This isn't World War II. This reminds me of a piece of shit that I used to work with named John Riccio. If I haven't mentioned John Riccio before, I lied. I have. John Riccio is a disgusting piece of shit. And with all the U.S. intel um, community shit rolling downhill, and I'm still getting blown up, guys, as I'm talking. They're still blowing up my mental health boy replied, funny, hysterical. Um, John Riccio is absolutely disgusting. The things that he, he has done to people that he will answer for, 
Yeah, John Rico, not watching this from home. Just kidding. You're sitting on a console right now and getting paid good money for it, you fucking bitch. He's the fucking, <clears throat> the Michael Jordan of the Air Force that nobody wants back. That looks like a John Rico basic bitch comment. Um, if, I'm, if it's just aimless schizo posting, why disable me? If I'm just an aimless fucking schizo, if I'm a harmless, stupid, moronic, missing the point, clueless, idiotic schizo, why disable my account? The, the way you guys describe me, I don't sound like much of a fucking threat. It might even be a good training opportunity for you guys to show compassion and um, uh, leadership attributes, which are clearly not showing here. If you were leaders, you would be taking time to mentor your airmen, not taking time to lambast somebody who is not in uh, your purview. And rest assured, I am not in your purview. Um, solid snack reply. Let's see what solid snack had to say. Seize German word. Ah, uh, yes, this must be about the Nazis. Yeah, because I couldn't possibly know anything about German history. What the fuck do you know about Oldenburg? What the fuck do you know about Schwab? What the fuck do you know about... about the Windsors? Nothing. The Habsburgs? Fucking nothing, dude. You know fucking nothing. You know what your fucking leadership wants you to know. And guess what your leadership knows? Charles Klaus Schwab is at the top. Yeah. That's why they couldn't shoot that fucking spy balloon down. Yeah, yeah. So the word on the street, because you guys sitting um, sitting from home, sit sitting at home, not watching this, um, the word on the street is that that was the script that Schwab gave Ray, FBI director Chris Ray, who should never have been at the World Economic Forum to begin with, highly fucking inappropriate, but that was a script that Ray gave, um, that Schwab gave Ray to run. Um, you should probably learn something about German history that goes way beyond World War I and World War II. I would suggest maybe the Austro-Hungarian Empire, the Ottoman Empire. You know, you probably know a juvenile amount of British history and a, a, a spare amount of, um, scarce amount of French history, um, and even less German history, clearly. Um, but you should probably, yeah, th this is embarrassing. I am not your fucking history book. Seize German word. Oh yes, this must be about the Nazis. Yeah, it's called etymology, dumb fucker. You should look it up. Yeah. Language, I hate to, I hate to burst your bubble. Language is monolithic. Oh my God, I know, I know, I know. And did you know academics code speak? Yeah. Oh, wow. You should look up something called lexicography. I don't think even like the typical Intel person would even know about that. John Rico might because he pays for pussy. <clears throat> um... Let's see, that guy 628 replied to my comment. Let's see 628, let's have it. <coughs> <coughs> Found the anime pillow loving Intel trooper. Well, I appreciate you qualifying me as Intel, just kidding. Don't ever fucking offend me like that again. Disgusting, I miss weather, much better. I was horrified. I was absolutely horrified when I was on shift and Senior Lofts was like singing my praises because I spent 30 minutes. <clears throat> I'm not making this shit up. I'm a, I'm a weather forecaster. Was. Retired. Um, I was sitting shift and a bunch of us were talking. Ooh. <clears throat> That's a good one. A bunch of us were talking and um <clears throat> Sorry, I gotta take a pause. Um, we were trying to remember a certain comedian's name and Roy G. Bib Lofts was the one talking about it. He's like, oh, I can't remember his name. Okay. And Roy, Roy, full disclosure, Roy was um, prior special forces weather. So pretty useless. Um, anyway, he was trying to figure out the comedian's name and just, I just like to know, like, 
I was invested in the conversation, not because Roy was in it, not not any shade for that conversation, but he wasn't like my favorite conversationalist. He was rather dry and didn't ever really go beyond surface level. But anyway, he kept talking about this guy and uh, I had to know, like, I was like, I'm on a mission. I'm on a motherfucking mission. So the mission permitted, um, no pun intended. Um, so I dedicated the next 30 minutes of my life trying to find out who this comedian was. And other people are like, well, I want to know now too. Well, I finally found it. Like, I mean, I was good. I must have come up with 50 or 60 ways to Google this person. And I finally found it. And I said, is it da 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 da? And he was like, that's it. Oh my God. And he like, no kidding. I'm not making this up. He was serious. He was like, oh my God, you should be an Intel troop. That is insane. In fact, it's funny as I'm saying this now, I, I, it just now occurred to me, the people that I was racing against were Intel troops. And some of them some pretty goddamn good ones too. Like I, I as, you know, as much as it sucked being a DOD whistleblower, um, I did work with some really good Intel analysts. There were some really good ones that I worked with that I really, really appreciated. So <clears throat> he was like, oh my God, you know, and I'm just thinking, are you kidding me? You think that is illuminating and watershed? You are impressed by that. Like that kind of frightened me a little bit. That kind of like, in his mind, he was paying me a compliment. In my mind, I was like, please tell me you're not really impressed by that. That is nothing to be impressed about. Like in my mind, I was just relieved to know. And like, okay, yeah, I mean, never. Nobody hates finding out the answer first. I'm not really accustomed to that, but nobody hates finding out the answer first. Um, so yeah, I was just a little bit meh. So I, nah, definitely not an Intel trooper. One, I have a backbone. Um, two, I'm not a coward. Three, I'm not a careerist. Four, I didn't step on anybody to get promoted to the lofty rank of E6. <clears throat> I could keep going. Oh, one more. Mental health boy replied. <clears throat> Can I get your ID, full name and date of birth? Thanks. P or PRP or AUOF? Cool, cool. All right, go ahead and check in on the computers and let me know when you're done. Um, well, I appreciate that typo down there. Um, your, great, your punctuation is not good. I'm not really proud of that punctuation, sir or ma'am. Please work on that punctuation. Please. Your, you are, no pun intended, just kidding, it is. You are in presumably a phase in your career where your writing needs to start looking more polished. Your writing, and I hate to say it like that, I don't want to be a grammar Nazi, but if you're going to come at me and try to mentor me, in your mind you're mentoring me, you're not. You're just jumping on a fucking um, mob mentality bandwagon, <laughs> coward. <laughs> um, <clears throat> But you should be at a stage in your career where your writing's starting to look more polished than this. Yeah, um, and your whole not a notter attitude. Let me tell you something about maintainers and security forces. You guys are the first ones to complain about the wing king and the pilots. The first ones. But airmen not watching this one from home. Who are the who are the people who always sweep up the annual wing awards? Maintainers, 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 maintainers. Yep. So you guys are you guys are very happy to be bitching about leadership when they're not around. But when they are around, you fucking climb so high up the goddamn asses that you goddamn breathe for them. Stop being fucking cowardly, spineless, yes boys. I'm sick of you fucking maintainer pussies thumbing your noses at non and honors. You guys are the motherfuckers who enable these fucking yes boys, these fucking sage green onesie wearers. And then, then you get salty and you want a little slice of the pie. So then you decide to go enlisted air crew as a combat drone sensor ops. Yeah, I know a lot of you too in the combat drone world. Yeah. You guys make a pretty dynamic duo, um, ambiguously gay dynamic duo, I might add, with the combat drone pilots. 
Um, so stop your not an honor bullshit. Nobody wants to hear it. Nobody needs to hear it. Uh, on top of your writing quality, you should also be at a, at a point where you understand the strategic and oper we're not talking tactical here. You should be at a point where you understand the operational and strategical capacity of every goddamn Air Force specialty code and function out there. Dumb motherfucker. So put away the Reddit. Go find you a book on grammar, not the tongue and quill. That, that might be a good start, but you got to go beyond that. The tongue and quill was written by idiots and it hasn't been updated in a very long time. And guess what? Language academies change with the wind, motherfucker. Um, you probably don't even know about language academies. I forgive you. You are forgiven. Um, the, this poor workmanship is embarrassing. I'm assuming this is some kind of NCO because they have enough information to know the game a little bit. They clearly know the game. They clearly have an attitude about not and honors. This is a male maintainer and CEO. That's my best guess. Maybe they went Intel, maybe they went sensor ops and they're sitting console, console right now. Um, but this is definitely somebody who is at least an NCO. I am embarrassed for you. You probably have a master's degree that you got from a degree factory called Thomas Edison or UMUC, I get it, whatever, NHU, AMU, whatever. Um, and this is the quality of your work. You're an NCO, you're an airman. Your airmen are going to see this. And the, the smart ones, the ones who don't need to be force-fed ideas like you clearly do, are going to say, oh my god, like he's trying to burn this chick, but... Uh, he really, he really needs to fucking brush up on his grammar and shit. Oh my god, this guy's gonna be, you know what they're gonna be saying? This guy's gonna be writing my EPR. Oh fuck. Oh fuck. Your airmen not watching this from home are sitting at their computers googling how do I write my own enlisted performance report so I don't get fucked over by this ass clown who clearly does not know how to fucking write. Because if this is how you write for trying to remind me that I'm a, I'm a stupid, useless, worthless nobody and that you're the superior, then I can only imagine just the level of delusion that goes into the writing, the operational writing, the EPRs, the 1206s. I, I feel bad for any airman for any airman in your purview who has your name as their supervisor, as the raider. I mean, I would not want you touching my fucking 1206 or my EPR with a 12 foot fucking pool, dude. So I know you think you're tough shit because you got to drop another not an honor ref reference and you're gonna go swing your itty bitty dick in front of a bunch of pilots that you bitch about anyway and act like you're tough shit you're not and they don't care and you're a dumbass. Please brush up on your leadership attributes. Please challenge yourself to become a better, stronger writer. That's not shade from me. That's coming from somebody who struggled with writing until I challenged myself to become a better, stronger writer. And guess what? I am still challenging myself to do that, which is could explain why I'm a strong writer. Hmm. Interesting concept. You, I'm not saying you're not. It's not my, it's not my place to, to define your potential, but I am saying you're not working as hard as you could be working. So mental health boy, Let's focus on the Reddit and the um, the lame, uninspired commentary littered with typos. And um, yeah, get crack a lack in on your leadership attributes. That's what counts. That's what matters most. And the people. And I'm not the people. Yeah, so focus on your troops, not me. Yeah. They're, they're probably wondering why their fucking supervisor doesn't fucking care or know their names or know that they just had surgery and isn't calling to see how they're doing. Yeah, they're probably wondering about that while well, you're sitting there blowing my fucking um, phone up with oh, just piss poor fucking writing. I hate like, oh, I hate bad writing. There's nothing more offensive than bad writing. I mean, oh, God. God help us. God help us. 
This is America's finest, y'all. Oh, Jesus Christ, we're fucked. Anyway, um, getting on to what I wanted to talk about. Um, I got the old notebook out. Um, so, the straight of the day <clears throat> is Cantaloupe Haze. Oh my God. And then I switched to Ghost OG. Ooh, Ghost OG is so good. Oh my God. And it gave me a hardcore case of the giggles afterwards. Oh my God. And then I, let's see, I've gone, it's been over a week. I haven't smoked inside. This is cereal milk. I got this a while ago and I just tried it today. Holy shit, I've been missing out. Oh my God. This is a lot of fun. This is definitely a very party strain, I think. <coughs> definitely <coughs> really <coughs> active. <coughs> kind of cere cerebral strain. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> it really hit me hard. <coughs> I should probably lower the heat on this. I don't know. Probably not gonna. Um, so apparently, um, I heard Starship is scheduled to launch on the 17th of April. Oh my god, that's so exciting! I'm so excited for everybody at SpaceX, and I guess it's called the X Holdings now, or Twitter is called X. I have to look that up, but that's really exciting. Um, to me, and I don't, I don't mean to make this, um, heavy, just bear with me, y'all, not watching from home. It, it reminds me of, in reverse, when the Challenger took off, I think it was 86, early 87, I can't remember. Oh, uh, somebody else is letting me know I'm missing the point entirely. Entirely! Entirely! Yeah, well, you wouldn't know because I haven't been able to respond. Anyway, so when the Challenger um, launched, nobody expected what happened right um it was i think traumatic for a lot of americans not you know obviously for the families yes traumatic in a different way for them um but it was traumatic in a sense of just watching i i can't even put into words it I remember I, I went I went outside that day that morning to play at recess or it might have been like like lunchtime. We were out at recess. I was in first grade and when we came back, my teacher had been weeping and she put the news on for us to see and um, nobody obviously nobody was expecting that. So when I think of um, of starship, I just think of um, getting to a right that sad moment, even though it's, you know, obviously different mission and all that, but so many people in my generation, my mother's generation and the generation before hers, they know where they were when the Challenger exploded and basically just exploded in midair um, and can remember with great clarity where they were, what they were doing. Um, and this is the feeling that I get with Starship that so many people are going to, for for good this time, are going to remember where they were, what they were doing when they see Starship launch for the first time. Because there will be many times after this, the first time. It's going to be so hugely inspirational and powerful to so many people, um, regardless of generation. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm absolutely going to be uh, taking the afternoon off to watch it from <clears throat> here in my, my little apartment in Kansas. And shit, maybe I'll go to my, my favorite, um, one of my favorite places to watch it. Just, I, just to be around people and just to see everybody's excitement. Because that'll, that'll be really powerful, I think. Um, you know, the news will tell you one thing, but everyday people will tell you another so I'm, I'm really really looking forward to the 17th of april and just keeping 
everybody working on that mission and on that that craft in my thoughts and prayers that's a lot of pressure that's I don't envy anybody anybody that position period um, so I'm, I'm sending lots of Care Bear stares out into the world and um, yeah it's it's gonna be epic it, it's gonna be epic it's gonna be epic anyway um, I, uh, I just, yeah, anyway, so, um, I did have a chance to watch the, um, Marjorie Taylor Greene interview with that doc, uh, not doctor, I, DR, his initials are DR, so I say doctor, Dave Rubin, um, <coughs> the Dave Rubin report did, it was a deeply moving interview, I was very excited about, I think I'm actually going to do a rewatch on this, um, some of the highlights I, I really appreciated and and maybe this isn't as important to other people but it's important to me because it shows a lot of loyalty and trust um on the one hand um representative um mtg <coughs> expressed that she was profoundly grateful um, that Elon Musk is now the CEO of Twitter or X. <coughs> and then she also expressed pretty immediately thereafter that her account had been um, had been suspended for however many days for uh, some kind of post um, having to do with a, I think like a transgender related riot or something like that. I don't know the ins and outs of uh, why it was um, suspended. I'm just, the point I'm making is I think it's really cool that she can have enough respect for somebody to let it go or keep it between them. You know, I'm sure if they had a conversation, nobody needs to know about that. I think that's really classy. I think that's a really fucking classy thing to do. Um, and she can still, and I think should, sing his praises. She's, she's very vocal about um, the impact of uh, Elon Musk buying Twitter has been, and um, in a very favorable manner. Um, I also appreciate how loyal she's been towards Trump and... Um, and McCarthy. Now, I'm still, Trump still is not on my ballot. Like, I'll be honest. Um, yes, I'm definitely looking at him with a softer gaze and well, a fresh gaze, I should say, um, these days, um, in light of, of what's been revealed to have happened in the mainstream media with the election and Hunter Biden's laptop. Um, but He's not my he's not my pick for president. I would say more and more with every passing day, McCarthy is just like standing out to me. Um uh but yeah, Trump Trump isn't my he wasn't my favorite president. He was probably well, it's since been replaced by, by Obama and Biden, but um up until time was my least favorite commander in chief, Sergeant. Although the North North Korea thing was badass, but yeah, Trump Trump is not my 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 hopeful candidate for president. No, not by a long shot. But I appreciate that she can still be loyal to him, especially in a time where it was not popular at all. It, fuck it, dangerous to be a Trump supporter. Yeah, that, that speaks, even though I'm not and wasn't then, um, it speaks a lot to me that she doesn't have a mob mentality. I like that. I really appreciate that in a person, that they're not afraid to be part of the unpopular um, opinion or voice. That That is very profoundly important to me. And so I respect that in Marjorie Taylor, Taylor Greene a lot. Um, <clears throat> let's see, somebody, somebody yelled at me on Reddit, oh, no, on Reddit, wrong one, <laughs> uh, a lot of somebody's, 
Can I get your ID for, oh God. <laughs> Leo Niner, negative 64. Yeah, yeah, I would love to check out their reaction. Leo, I would love to respond, but I can't. They've disabled me. Not a fair fight, is it? Yeah, no. You guys know all about not a fair fight, though. Look at Senior Hell. He's sitting in prison for a crime he did not commit and um, forgoing a Congressional Medal of Honor that he earned. Yeah, I know. But keep being spineless. If that gets you stratification points, okay. Whatever you want, Leo Niner Plus. Whatever you want. Jesus Christ. Oh my God. They are inveterate ass kissers. I can't even. You guys, you guys not watching this from home, that is what ass kissing looks like. The, but I, now I get it. The pressure for stratification is real. Like, it's not enough that you have a firewall five. It's not enough that your Raiders Raider endorsed that or it's you, now you have to have fucking stratification oh god and even that's not gonna be enough now they're gonna have to create something that outpaces stratification <sighs> but i'm the problem sure okay mm. all right whatever you say um what I, I really go back to marjorie taylor green i really appreciate appreciate that about her um i also appreciate that in this this is not an insult. This is a compliment <clears throat> that she can speak in a way that her constituents can understand her. That's so important. Um, even if even if she's not from the same class, like um, let's say, and I don't know, I don't know enough about Marjorie Taylor Greene's district to know the demographics, but let's let's just say that um, sixty percent of her constituents fall in staunch working class. Um, she can still speak to them in a manner that makes them feel heard. I know because I identify as working class. I feel heard when she speaks. And um, it, it was very refreshing to see this side of her because full disclosure, I was not a supporter. I What I knew of Marjorie Taylor Greene, I saw of her from the lens of left-leaning media up until about 2021-ish. And then after that, I just became increasingly apolitical or I guess anti-party. Um, but yeah, I, I was I was not a fan of her. I, I used to thumb my nose at, at uh, MAGA supporters all the time, all the time. Yeah. Um, the woman that Dave Rubin interviewed was not the same woman that mainstream media included in their, um, in their talking points. Yeah. Um, very articulate, very well-spoken, very connected. Um, not, a, I didn't find her abrasive. I found her candid. I found her refreshing. Um, not, does not take shit, is not a pushover. Oh my God, could it get any sexier? I shouldn't say that. I don't want to, you know what I mean? I, I meant like, okay, anyway, moving on. Um, I am a big fan of that. Um, also the apology, she talked about apologizing for the commentary that she made that was detrimental to her party. That's not a sign of weakness. Why do we think that's a sign of weakness? Have we been so ingrained to live according to fear that we're afraid to make mistakes now? Because I think the answer is yes. We're afraid to make mistakes because we don't know what the consequences are. We literally live in a society where we don't know what the consequences are for our mistakes. Yeah, it's a mind fuck. It's a real mind fuck. And we see people left and right who have to face consequences all the time in our society who never get to face their accusers or even get to know the shit. I still don't even know why I was arrested or what the nature of the charges were for my arrest or even if they pressed any charges. I still don't know, yeah. Um, I thought it was very classy that Marjorie Taylor Greene apologized. 
Um, I thought it was very classy that she made the point that it's not a sign of weakness to apologize. It should be done more because that's life. You're not always going to agree. You're, you're going to, I mean, even the best among us are going to unintentionally hurt people, at least unintentionally hurt people. It's unavoidable. Um, to apologize is a sign of courage in my book, a huge sign of courage and a huge sign of personal accountability, um, integrity, like, cause there are times and I know, like in hindsight, I'll be like, yeah, I shouldn't have done that. I need to apologize to that person. Um, I don't always do it. Often I do, but there, there are times where I'm like, yeah, I really, I need to, I don't really want to admit that I'm wrong, but I know I'm wrong, but I'm trying to find ways to not be wrong, but then I know I'd be looking somebody I care about in the eye and being like, you're wrong for thinking that, and I can't do that either. Um, yeah, so I, I really, I think that's cool. We gotta apologize. We all fuck up. It's not a one mistake life, even though we've been led to believe by Hollywood that it is. Um, even, even Michael Vick did his time. And if that, if that chaps somebody's ass, okay, but he did his time. It's, I mean, what more can I ask of Michael Vick after he did his time? Don't go out and do it again. I don't, I'm thinking, I think he didn't go out and do it again. So he must have learned something. Um, yeah, that's just my attitude. I, I think it's really cool. And um, a great sign of uh, just leadership attributes to be able to apologize, to be able to say, hey, I, I did not. I did not make the right choice, or I could have handled this better, or I need to re-examine what I did here. It's, that's awesome. That's not a party foul. That is a plus. That is a, it's, it's a requirement to, to life. You're always learning. You're always learning. And once you stop learning, you stop living. And then you're existing. And existing is miserable. Nobody wants to exist. It's, it's about living, not existing. And there is a difference. There is a difference. Um, so, yeah, very, very cool. Um, one thing I'll say about um, Dave Rubin, I really appreciate his interview style. Um, he comes across very earnest, um, very endearing, v very, very warm. Um, he... He even, I would say, and hear me out, I don't mean this in a sexual way. Um, I, I feel like people have misconstrued this word very, very badly because it's something I identify with. And believe me, when I do it, it is not sexual. I know there's nothing remotely sexual about it whatsoever. Um, he has a flirtatious quality in his interview. He's very charming. He does like little flirty things that don't, read as sexual. They just read as, oh, okay, that's kind of part of his personality, part of his charm. Um, <clears throat> I, I really am coming to appreciate his interview style. Um, you know, I'm, I think what I think about DeSantin and he's a, he's a DeSantis supporter, you know, there is that, but I, you know, I, I can't fault anybody for not being able to believe in half measures. I can't believe in half measures. Yes, I can, I can rationally say, oh yeah, everybody's human. They can fuck up. But at the same time, I can't believe in somebody by like a half measure. It, it doesn't make sense to me to say, I believe in you, but then you don't believe in them. There's a but, you don't believe in them. The belief is, <laughs> belief, a.k.a. faith. Faith. That's what faith is. It's belief. Okay, I'm getting Shadow Devil 98 replied. Let's see what Shadow Devil says. Um, uh, I can't read it. Mm. Mm. Man, I want to see. Laughing my ass off. Read the room, little guy. You're not impressing anyone with your ignorant statements. You're just showing everyone you were never burdened with an overabundance of education. Man, is this the hot wash, boys? 
If it makes you feel better to draw in some dots so you can connect them to form whatever picture you want, that's cool, but don't call other people stupid for not seeing the unintended picture portrayed by Op's accomplishment. OP, sorry, my bad. You just called me stupid over abundance of education. You were never burdened with an overabundance of education. And then you tell me not to, I never called anybody stupid. I mean, I probably did. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. But hey, if somebody comes at me sideways, I ain't playing by their goddamn rules, buddy. You can fucking count on that. Yeah, y you and your fucking overgrown frat boy rules, they don't apply to me. Oh, oh, now they submitted my name to the Reddit um, resource. That's called swatting. Um, medical swatting, wellness swatting is swatting. That's swatting. That's unconstitutional. These people are sitting console doing this right now. Sitting console on Title $10 doing this right now. That's swatting. That's absolutely disgusting. And um, yeah, and I'm not allowed to apply. Yep. Um, Laughing my ass off. Shadow Devil 98. Shadow Devil, no, you shouldn't be laughing your ass off. Guess what? You got a bunch of chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff sitting in front of Congress right now looking at ways to defray their accountability and um, shit rolling downhill into them. Guess what? They're going to step it aside and let it roll downhill to you guys. I know. Yeah, you guys have such great leadership. That's why we have fucking spy balloons infiltrating our goddamn borders. Because of this great leadership. Oh my god. My bad. I'm the dumb one. My bad. Um, anyway, moving on. Um, I, I really, I like that about, um, about Dave Rubin's, uh, style. Now, like I was saying, not a big fan of DeSatan. I can't believe in anybody in half measures. So, like, yeah. And I don't, I don't believe in saying, hey, I believe in so-and-so. They're really gifted at this. But I also need to keep it realistic. They're going to fail. They could fail. They could also fail. They've made mistakes in the past. And yeah, no, that's not a compliment. Compliment does not need to be followed up by leveling the person down to remind them that you know that they're human. I mean, I, I would hope that an emotionally intelligent human being would factor in the humanity aspect automatically. Um, but maybe I'm just weird for thinking that. Anyway. You know, it just occurred to me, I could be sitting in some skiff right now, like on a big screen, my beautiful face shining in. And all those horny wife beaters. No, not all of them are wife beaters. Um, but a lot of them are horny. I mean, Justin Crawford, you really want to go there? If I get blown up one more time on this thread, I'm going to talk about Justin Crawford in the hotel room. Yeah. Hope you guys don't say anything. I don't, I don't want to say anything about it. No, nah, but I'll read the email that I sent him. I don't want to, but I will. So if somebody if somebody blows up my Reddit one more time or sends me another care resource request out of retaliation for criticizing a very tasteless fucking metal. I'm sorry, I don't need a fucking invitation to know that it's tasteless. My grandfather was a World War II vet. He served in the South Pacific. Um, he would have found that tasteless. It's tasteless. It's fucking tasteless. Um... <laughs> Anyway, but yeah, let, let, let's act like beards are the enemy. Yeah, yeah, not, 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 not Nazi era holdovers or, or artifacts that are based on Nazi semiotics. Let's call a spade a spade. I don't need an invitation for that one either. Um, it's, I mean, <laughs> but you guys want to talk like airmen wanting beards are the bad guy. I don't think they should even have beards, really. I think, you know, you should look kind of polished in uniform. But at the same time, if if your entire force is saying, we want beards, it's a quality of life factor, then maybe I'm the odd one out. Maybe you should go with the majority. Just saying. I'm just saying. But that <laughs> the one thing that we agree on. Not for the same reason. You guys want beards to... You don't, you don't want... Just like... 
it, just like these fucking mainstream journalists and um, influencers don't want little peons like me having a blue check mark on Twitter. You don't want little enlisted force peons having a fucking um, the the spec ops uh, version of a blue check mark. A beard. That's what it all comes down to. I'm so over you fucking bitch. I'm I'm over you fucking bitches. I'm so so fucking over you bitches. Maintainers, you guys are the cowardliest fucking bunch of of NCOs. I can't even call you NCOs. You are subservient, dick sucking, spineless. Can't think of another one. Pusillanimous. Cowardly. Already said cowardly three times. I get the point. I like maintainers. You have no right to thumb your nose at noners. You have no right. You like like literally if you're thumbing your nose at an honor as a maintainer, and you're above the um the pay grade of equal or above E5, <clears throat> you're fucking clueless. You clearly did not realize or pay attention to the fact that tactical and operational and strategic, yeah, I know. Um, you should probably hit the books. Wait, you're a maintainer because you don't need, you need, a, you need a fucking technical order with pictures in it. My bad, my bad. But I'm the spoiled one. <laughs> Um, anyway, I got to get going. I wanted to talk about so much more today, but I got caught up. Um, maybe I'll hop on later tonight. I'm feeling hella fucking festive. This cereal milk is the fucking shit. Oh my God. I cannot believe I did not smoke it until now. Like I bought this back in January. It is the shit. I keep saying it, but I'm, I'm going to get into writing, uh, writing, writing, no. <laughs> I'm going to get into writing Leafly reviews. Um, I am so addicted to reading those fucking things. They're so much fun. Sometimes they can get hella pretentious, but a lot of times they can get fucking, just fucking hysterical. Oh my God. My favorite one, one of my favorite ones, this one lady, she was talking about how she's... Oh, I can't even talk about it with a straight face. She's talking about her evening. I forget which strain it was, but she took a couple puffs and she was like, oh, I just wanted to have spa day. And I did my toes and I did a mask and I did my, like, I think like a mani or some shit. Oh, did I get fucking lit up again? Motherfucker. Okay, good. Um, did a mask and did a petty and a mani. I guess I don't want to hear the Justin Crawford hotel story. Are you sure? No, light it up, light it up, guys. Fucking, fucking, fucking respond. Say something. I want to tell the Justin Crawford hotel story. Come on, Intel buddies. Come on. I want to tell this story. Oh my god, the story that Justin Crawford doesn't want getting out. I don't even have to tell it. I'll just read it word for word from the the uh, messenger message I sent him um, several months ago. It's fucking epic. Some of my best work. I would love to showcase it. Um, so anyway, uh, where was I going with this? I was going somewhere with this. Mm, oh, Leafly Reviews, yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah, so this lady is fucking describing in fucking hysterical detail. Um, hey, Duckett. Oh, do we do the piggy shout? That's Truffle Piggy, when he makes it... I call it truffle piggy sounds. Oh my God, I've, I, he can be a pain in the ass, but I'm fucking obsessed with this little guy. He's not that, you know what? All, considering he's a puppy, he's actually not that bad. He's not that bad. Um, so anyway, this lady is describing in amazing detail her fucking spa night. <laughs> and then she goes on to just talk about how beautiful and luxurious and refreshed she felt and then she says she looks in the mirror and she finds herself looking at a female gym brewer <laughs> it's like the <coughs> it is and i i and i don't think jim brewer is a bad looking man but i got the point it's like the best fucking description ever <laughs> <coughs> then 
there was another Leafly review. Um, she was trying to say she um, she smoked um, she smoked some of the strain and like she got high with her brother and then had sex, but obviously she meant she had sex with somebody else. Like I f I forget the exact way she worded it, but it was obvious. It was obvious that it wasn't with her brother, but because of the way that she worded it and the typo, it was like a punctuation error or something like that. It looked like she was saying that she smoked it and then had sex with her brother. <laughs> said, oh, I might even still have that one. I said that to my girl Chrissy. Let me see if I still have that. Oh my God, I was fucking dying. Okay, Chrissy, Chrissy, Chrissy. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Um, oh, where is it? Why didn't it go through? Oh, hmm. Okay, I took a picture of it. Um, it's gonna take me five years to find it though. It was pretty epic. I sent it to my, one of my girlfriends, Chrissy, um, cause I knew she's a total grammar Nazi. I knew she was going to get a big kick out of it. Um, but anyway, I better get going. I've, I've talked for long enough. Um, uh, nobody's hit me up for um, <clears throat> for the Crawford story. I don't know. That's interesting. Um, does anybody want to hear the Ken Erbach story? I'm, wait I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see if my Reddit lights up. Uh, okay. Does anybody want to hear the John Mikio story? Which one? The one where he fucked Laura Puff Puff? Oh my god. I hope I am in a skiff right now. Oh my god. John Riccio ghosted Laura Puff Puff. <sighs> Savage. But it's undercut and devalued by the fact that John Riccio wants to be an arborist but is too much of a fucking pussy to do what he wants to do in life. So instead, he just bees miserable. Um, yeah. John Riccio ghosted Laura Puff Puff. That is insane to me. Insanely fucking hysterical. Because Laura was a fucking pain in the ass. How many guys did Laura fuck there in the skiff anyway? Um, I know she's fucked some married guys. Andrew Mitchell. She fucked Andrew Mitchell. Um, Andrew Mitchell gave himself away. Um, Andrew, don't ask me how. You're never going to believe me. Uh, actually, no, I don't want to tell you how. I don't want to, it might, might help out your, your next wife. Yeah, I'm not going to tell you how. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to drop that human intelligence on you. Um, hmm. Who else? She fucked Stanley Nichols, who fucked Rebecca Hughes. Um, she fucked Rook. Um, ew. to me, Rook looks like Napoleon Dynamite got his hair dyed and like, I guess like permed or straightened and like he even always had that kind of like look like I'm gonna pull him up on Facebook now um let me see I don't know if I if I have him on Facebook but he he even has that fucking like I don't know look like look this is just something I heard the word on the street is like he doesn't mind using date rape drugs I can I can't find him maybe it's under Tom Rook so I know he likes to call himself Tom. I guess to sound older. I don't. I. Ah, I can't tell. Fuck it. Oh, Brittany and Tom Rook's wedding. Maybe that's it. Maybe this is it, guys. Oh God. Uh, n no. Definitely not Rook. Definitely not Rook. Um. Rook is too much of a pretty boy to ever dress like that. Oh, I made, oh, here's some fucking dirt. When I was doing Rook's um, deployment processing, his pre-deployment shit, um, I was saying, hey, um, trying to say, fuck, fuck you, or I, I was trying to say, fuck you, that's right. Rook said something to me. It was funny, because to be fair, Rook, Rook could be pleasant to work with. But um, Rook said something to me. Oh, Sergeant, was I, was I married then? I can't remember. I think I was married. I can't remember. Um, didn't matter. In my mind, whether I was married or not, in my mind, I was in a, in a monogamous, very 
very openly committed relationship. Like, I made no bones about it. Um, so, anyway, I, I was just talking to Rook in my little office, and um, he, he made, like, a jokey comment, and I said, fuck, I meant to say, fuck you, Rook, and I said, fuck me, Rook, and I was like, uh, I said, I'm so sorry, and then say fuck you. <laughs> He's like, oh, Sergeant Thompson, if you want to, or something like that. And, like, I, I didn't think anything of it at the time. I just laughed it off. Like, okay, like, he, he knows it was, like, a complete, like, slip of the, like, tongue. And, ooh, not a good, uh, uh, maybe I should have used a different figure speech. I'm not helping myself. Figure doesn't help either. Um... Yeah, but no, nah, no. Nah. In the moment, I was like, okay, he, okay. And I was kind of like, oh, fuck, because this was hot off the, um, well, about a year or so off the heels of Rebecca Hughes being ousted from the unit for having an extramarital affair with Rook and Nichols, who very quickly got promoted. Um, yeah, so I was like, fuck, I don't want to, oh, my God, I don't want to, so... He let it be. He seemed to laugh it off in the moment. And I was like, okay, phew, okay. Crisis averted. Like, I don't need this E4 thinking he has a shot with Cougar Thompson. Um, well, here's where it gets lit, y'all. Um, it might, I think it was like a month or so later, shortly before he out processed for his deployment to CENTCOM. Was it CENTCOM? Who cares? Um, they might be co-located. Um, I can't remember. So anyway, um, so I was at home. I was living in Swedesboro, New Jersey at the time. Fucking exhausted because of working 12s and fucking having it. Bless you. Working 12s. Um, having to fucking make that drive from Swedesboro all the way up to Horsham. Oh my God. On a good day, it was tolerable. Good meaning traffic, not really a problem. Um, tolerable, yeah. So anyway, uh, I was getting ready for bed. My spouse at the time, oh no, I don't think I was married. No, I wasn't married then, that's right. Um, my we, we weren't married yet. Um, thank God he was home, because so I was like, oh my God, you okay, Dickie? I like, I don't know what the fuck to do. Oh, my God. Um, <clears throat> I was getting ready for bed, and it had to have been, like, 11 o'clock at night, and I get into bed, and I I always keep my ringer off. I hate, I hate leaving my ringer on. I fucking hate it. If I don't have to, I won't. Um, definitely at bedtime, unless, like, if I were in the military, six-ring standby, different story, but if I don't have to, I won't. Um, and 99% of the time I don't need to, so I don't. Um, but anyway, I got into bed and I saw that I missed a, I think it was a, oh, it was on Messenger. That's right. Facebook Messenger. And he was like, something like, ooh, you look really hot or something like that. And yada, yada, yada. Like, um, do you want to hook up or something? It, I mean, it was like, like he made no bones about it. Like, there was no mystery what this was about. This was a fucking 11 o'clock at night booty call text. And I, like, I'd only ever been in an office with him um, six feet apart. This was before COVID. Six feet apart. Um, yes, I'm friendly. Um, yes, I accidentally said, fuck me instead of fuck you. Oops. I guess it went to his head. Not the right one. And, um... I just remember getting in bed like, oh, Jesus fucking Christ. And I told my, my, um, my boyfriend at the time, um, whom I later married, I, I said, I don't know what to do. I said, I, I don't want to respond. And then like have, cause I already had John Riccio going around, John Riccio, fucking Intel Nazi. And I do mean it. He is a fucking Nazi. He's a fucking Intel czar. Like the shit that he does to people is fucking depraved. But in my mind, it was like, great. Now John Riccio is going to hear about this and then tell everybody that I'm a fucking whore. Oh, he'd already done that. Um, 
and God knows what else that I wasn't, he told people that I didn't deserve a security clearance because I wasn't trustworthy. This was after I made it clear to him that I was not interested in his penis being anywhere near the proximity of my body or my thoughts. Um, yeah, so like, I, obviously my, my, my spouse knew that. I, I told him, I was like, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't want to get on Rikio's fucking radar yet again. Um, <clears throat> so I, I didn't want to make any waves. Like, I, I mean, I hate to say it like that, but I literally did not want to make any waves. And I, I think my, I can't remember. My spouse was just like, oh, I'll just let it go or something. I don't know. Um, which actually might've been the way to do it. Um, so I just kept getting ready for bed and I got into bed and about 30 minutes later, I got a text uh, a messenger. It was on messenger. That's right. Yeah, I already said that. Um, sorry, wrong person. No problem, Rook. Not a problem. Don't worry about it. Thank God I had not responded. Oh my God. So I got to like play it off like, oh my God, no problem. Totally happens. Like don't, don't break your head over it. It's all good. Crisis averted. Um, and it could have been the wrong person. I didn't ask. I didn't ask for further clarification. Didn't really want it. Didn't need to know. Um, judging by his morals, probably not. Probably same face. I was very happy to let him. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> I would love to tell the John Rico story. Which one? All of them. Duh. It, duh. These are stories worth telling. John Riccio will be held accountable um, for what he's done to people. He has done disgusting things to people. Uh, things that have irrevoc irrevocably altered the livelihoods of people. Yeah, nice guy, huh? The kind of guy that you probably don't want with a TSSCI running around. No, deeply retaliatory, um, disgruntled human being. Um, well, I guess the Intel bunny sitting console on the Air Force subreddit aren't interested in what I have to say about John Riccio. I'm not going to let that stop me from talking about him, but it's going to have to wait for another day. Um, I got other stuff I want to talk about that I'm going to probably have to talk about later. Uh... <clears throat> I wanted to troll a couple people on YouTube subs. I got locked into this Reddit. I'm just going to stop commenting. I'm just going to, you know, when I see stupidity on Reddit, I'm just going to come here and comment. Um, it's not that I don't like the shit talking. I do. Um, it's just, if I get too sucked into it, then I'm doing stuff that, or I'm missing out on stuff that I could be doing. It's like that. Like I, I do enjoy it. I do. I do find it fun. I do find it entertaining. Um, talking shit. I. I feel like part of that's part of the enlisted force heritage too. Um, but anyway, anyway, I'm yeah. So I'm gonna get going. I, I gotta go enjoy this weather. I'm wearing a hella cute dress. It's supposed to be like seventy eight degrees outside. Um, <clears throat> I'm feeling hella fabulous. I'm gonna take my, oh, I gotta take a smoke break. Oh, I'm smoking Ghost OG in my Elon bowl. It's over there. Uh-oh, is this sub leaking out to our all? Oh, I guess somebody, does somebody wanna hear the Crawford story? <gasps> does, is that a yes? Wait, where did that go? Oh God, oh God, oh God, let's go. Somebody might want to hear the Crawford story. I can't get to it. Oh, man. I can't read it. Mm. I guess it doesn't matter. This is some average-ass Redditor shit I very rarely see. Oh. You wouldn't know average if it fucking slapped you in the face because you've been swimming in a sea of mediocrity and you don't even fucking know it. Um, yeah. Average would be good for you. Average for you would be a fucking upgrade, dude. I can't even read the comment, but all I know is that average for you would be a goddamn upgrade. 
you guys have spy balloons coming across our borders and a bunch of nutless fucking senior ranking Air Force officials who did nothing about it. Your general, General Van Herc, did nothing about it. General Van Herc followed an unlawful order. Let me put it to you like that. General Van Herc followed an unlawful order. He was told to not engage that spy balloon um, down from the commander-in-chief. And he followed that. He put the lives of hundreds of millions of Americans at risk by following an unlawful order. You might not know how to distinguish an unlawful from a lawful order because the profession of arms in the Air Force no longer exists. So I don't expect anybody, um, certainly not any airmen not watching this from home, to have a great idea of what the profession of arms in the Air Force entails. Shit, any enlisted force troop in fucking DOD right now. Because there is none. There is none. There's a leadership vacuum. We, are, we do not have secure borders. What does that tell you about our military might? Yeah, you guys are well below average, clown. But whatever, act like I'm the fucking idiot. Now, I didn't, I didn't spend fucking 20 years of my life fighting a fucking endless war that was based on fallacious intelligence reports. I didn't, yeah. That's on you guys. You guys got promoted in that system. I didn't. I was a lowly E6, something that you guys like to remind me of all the time. Um, hmm. Interesting. I am going to tell the Crawford story um, since you guys asked for it. Okay, I'm going to tell. Where's my, where's my messenger? Where's my messenger? <sighs> you know, I didn't want to do this. I gave people options and people said, hey, you know what? We want the Crawford story. I just got to find it. It's going to take me a hot minute. Ooh, you guys want the Stephen Nordhaus story? Yeah, my piece of shit stepfather knows Stephen Nordhaus. Whoa, didn't know that, did you? Beep. Yeah, yeah, they go way back. At, at least as far back as Mountain Home. As in circa 1997. Yeah, you fucking clowns. That's okay, I didn't know either until recently. It's all good. You'll live, I did. Hugh McDonald, I can tell you that, nah. We'll save that one for a rainy day. Come on, Crawford, where are you? Where are you, Justin Crawford? Justin. Okay, I can't, okay, there it is. This is the message that I sent Justin Crawford. Yeah, that's what I sent Justin Crawford. Um, so just to ask you, Giant Zoo, um, is that some average ass Redditor bullshit that I just did? Yeah, you don't know what I just did. That's the beauty of it. Have fun. Have fun unpacking that one. I can't wait. I can't wait to see the reaction. All right, I got to get going. You guys have a great day. Enjoy the weather when you're not out watching this from home. I hope it's as beautiful as it is here. Um, I, I think I'm going to take Huckleberry for a walk. There's a park up the road. Take him for a walk, get some sunshine, get some exercise, um, maybe eat some food, fix my hair. All right, I'm going to get going. You guys have a happy day. Um, to the people who disabled my ability to comment on the Air Force subreddit thread, you proved my point. You guys can't handle being criticized, can you? No, you can't. Um, tough guys wouldn't ha have had to enable, or disable rather, my ability to respond. Um, anyway, gonna get going. Um, 
have a happy day. Tomorrow's hump day. The day after that is Thursday. The day after that is Friday. And the day after that is the weekend. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.